works. So can we are, we're there, we're there. Can you, Tammy, can you, oh, there we go. Now it's in. Hi. Hello, everybody. All right. So let's see if um, people can see us, people can hear us. Can you hear us, everyone? Let us know if you can hear um, and see both Tammy and I. <laughs> I think I think they could see us. <laughs> yeah, a little bit of a lag too, but that's okay. Yeah, it's a big, big lag. Oh, those comments are lying. It's going to be <laughs> tough answering um, questions and seeing these <laughs> comments just go flying. <laughs> All right, All right well, we're good. Awesome. So yeah, there um, actually there is a 10 second delay um, on YouTube from StreamYard. So okay. I'm not sure if uh, our mouths are moving um, on YouTube to <laughs> our voices. So I'm not really sure. Again, this is the first time Tammy and I are ever doing something like this. So there's going to be hiccups along the way. We're learning as we're going, but we thought it'd be a fun thing to do on a Saturday night. Um, so just bear with us. It's like watching a, a cheap foreign film. The, the mouths don't move up. <laughs> <laughs> we don't line up together. <laughs> oh, our mouths are in sync. <laughs> yeah. Hello. <laughs> All right. So who's in the house? Where's the wine? I don't drink wine. Tammy, where's your wine? Right here. <laughs> Coca-Cola flavored wine. <laughs> and do I have an echo? A little bit. It's because I'm in a big room. Sorry. Wow, we're in sync even in Australia. Thank you, Maria. <laughs> well Maybe. there's a lot of people in here so yeah i'll talk a little started? i think it's working i think so i think i think it's working uh oh tammy i think i lost your voice where'd you, you go can, tammy? oh you can hear me yeah i can hear you now Okay. <laughs> All right. So these comments are flying fast. Mm -hmm. So please do not be upset if we don't see your comment. Um, you can see for yourselves how fast the comments are going. So please bear with us. Um, you know, it's going to be, it's going to be hard, but we will do our best. All right. Yeah. Try Jimmy. slow mo. <laughs> okay, Judy. So, yeah. Uh, Judy McLean asks, "How can she avoid getting uh, avoid getting green when using blue and yellow?" You can't unless you layer paints with a color in between. When blue and yellow hit each other, they're gonna always make green. So you you have to. Uh, kind of figure out a way to layer and maybe put a little white in between or another coordinating color. Canela, you can take the next one, I guess. Michelle, Canela, if there's one piece of advice you can give for a successful Dutch pour, what would it be? Learn how to use your blow dryer. Um, well, that and the consistency of your paint. But if you don't know how to use your hair dryer, it ain't gonna work. It doesn't matter if your consistency is perfect or not. You need to know how to blow that paint. If you're too close and splatter it everywhere, it's not going to work. So again, just learn how to use that hair dryer. A lot of people ask me, what's your wattage of your hair dryer? It doesn't matter. Do you use it on high or low? It doesn't matter. Everybody's hair dryer is different. So you need to learn how to use your own hair dryer. 
Yeah, the wrist the wrist movement is very important oh, too. Oh, very true. Yeah, wrist mm -hmm. movement too. Uh, Kara, uh, Tammy, there's a question from Karen about a cell activator. Yeah, I'm I'm seeing that. Um, yes, Karen, you can actually. Erica Hughes from Erica Hughes Art actually did a couple of videos using glue wall, uh, water. And some, I think she had white paint in there, but no uh, uh, flow trial, no Australian flow trial, nothing like that. And it actually worked. And I actually did an experiment with black glue, black paint, and um, water, and that also made cells. So it does work. Kristen asks if we have our very first pour. I do not. I actually sold it. I regret it, but I don't have it. It was a flip cup back like almost three years ago, but no, I don't have it. <laughs> <laughs> I actually have mine somewhere. I don't have it here now to show you, but it was not good. I will show it on my channel, though, for my next video. I'll write that down, actually. Uh, Bonnie Lawrence, I do not use glue in anything I do. I do not use glue all, nothing. Only Floetrol and water. That's all I use. What you looking for, Tammy? What have you lost? No, I was looking for a piece of paper, but I don't have one. Remind me about my first pour painting. Oh, okay. So let's see. What do we got next? I made a Dutch pour painting. So did you see that one about the, the Dutch pour? The Dutch pour? No, nope, I must have missed it. She made a, a Dutch pour. Let's see. I'm going back. And after about an hour, she said it was all out of shape and deformed. What happened? Here it is. Hi from Texas. I made one Dutch pour painting and after one hour it deformed like the colors mixed into one another. What is the cause? So that could just be again, you know, your paints are, are you're not moving them right with the blow dryer. I mean, what do you think, Canella? Yeah, it could totally be your consistency. If they're not all the same consistency, your paints, then they're not going to mix properly. They're all going to disperse. Your colors might fractal. Your paints, your paints will fractal. It depends. It also depends on the brand of paint you're using. If you're using cheaper craft paints, that could happen. If you're using higher end paints, you might not get that effect. So there's so many different variations or variables as to why that could happen. Um, holy cow, these comments are flying fast. I have one here I want to answer from Cindy regarding uh, GAC 800 to thin out the paints. Here's an interesting fact. GAC 800 was Golden's original pouring medium before they had a pouring medium. It was like horribly marketed and people didn't know what it was for. And a lot of people assume it's just for, for cracking. But it was originally intended for thinning out acrylic paints and pouring them. Uh, I do not use it, but there are artists that do use that, just like they would a, a flow trawl or whatever. It's very expensive to use that, though, for a pouring medium. I have a, I had to scroll up because I wanted to answer this question from, oh, gosh, I lost it. Um, Kale Armor, what's the best finisher, resin or varnish? If varnish, what type? It's a personal preference. Um, it all depends. Do you want to use resin? Do you, are you comfortable using resin? Resin gives that really hard, glassy, you know, sh surface. Um, varnish does not. Varnish will give you a glossy surface, but it's a soft surface. Um, I personally use resin only, and I know Tammy only uses resin. We find that resin really makes the colors pop, really makes the colors shimmer. Um, but a lot of people aren't comfortable using resin. So um, in terms of what varnish, when I used to use varnish, I used Liquitex Basics, um, Liquitex Varnish. That's what I've used. All right, we have one here. Um, forgive me if I butcher your name. W. Roslot. Is there a cure for small cells? If you're using silicone to get cells, if you mix the silicone in a lot, 
they're going to be very tiny. If you mix it a couple of times, just a couple of swirls with a stick, you'll get bigger cells. If you're using Floetrol to mix your paints and you're getting smaller cells, Floetrol, it's, it's hard to control the outcome of the size of the cells. Maybe uh, you're not using enough or, you know, but if I knew, are you using silicone in your paint? What are you using to obtain cells? See if she answers. I'm just okay, curious. So while we're waiting for her to answer, Tammy, I think you and I should just um, alternate answering questions. I think okay. we'll do that. that. That'll be a great uh, okay. way. Okay. Um, Vicki, my tabletops are still drying, believe it or not. So let's see. Let me find a question here. Uh, yes, the video will be left up for replay after it's done live. I'm looking for a question here. Let's see. I have to scroll up. Uh, what resin do I use and should you use a mask when mixing? I, from Canada, use crystal resin. I know Tammy uses KS resin. So I use crystal resin. It is available to the U.S. and Canada. I have a, a discount code. Tammy has a discount code for KS resin. You find that in the descriptions below. Um, you doesn't matter if there's a resin out there that says, oh, it's no odor. It doesn't smell. I call BS on that. Um, all resin smells, especially when you put a heat gun to it and you start warming it up, there will always be a smell. So yes, you should always wear a, a respirator mask. Um, or if you're resining outside a ventilated area, you may not need it, but I suggest you use it. It's for your safety. It's for your health. I use my mask and I also have a Dyson air purifier running in the background. So yes, you need, you need a mask. You have to have one. It, uh, you know, it's just not good for your health. Otherwise go ahead, Tammy. Okay. Back to W Roslat's question. She's using Floetrol and wood conditioner, I believe for Dutch pour. You should not be using that red can of Minwax in a Dutch pour. Dutch pour should be water, paint, flow trawl that is it so that could be why you're having a problem with your cells canela okay <laughs> so before we continue um i just wanted to mention um a lot of you use the super chats and the super stickers um and you you donate during the live i have actually um disabled those and turned those off it's been brought to my attention that when you guys donate via super chat and via super stickers, YouTube takes 30 to 40% of those donations. I just found that out the other day uh, and I was flabbergasted. I had no idea that YouTube takes a cut out of that. So I've disabled those. So for any of you who are interested in donating, uh, I will link my PayPal link and Tammy's PayPal link in a comment here and pin it to the top. So, you know, if you want, no one says you have to, but we've decided that the super chats are a bad, bad thing because YouTube takes a huge cut out of that. So let's get back to the questions. Uh, let's see, where are we at? I think, was it your turn? Yeah, it was. Do, do, do. I'm just kind of scrolling up. Is Mina in here? Oh, hi, Mina. Erica also, and I'm sorry if I missed anybody else. Hi, Erica. So Miriam Go Gorbani says, Canela, have you ever used house paint on your pour? No, I've never used house paint in my Dutch pours. I find that my Artist Loft Flow Acrylic White works really well for me. It's not that expensive. Um, so no, I do not use house paint. Never have and likely never will. Tammy? All right. Let's see. Tammy, how do you get the bubbles out of primary elements? Are you talking just air bubbles? You just have to pop them with a torch. If that's what you're talking about. <laughs> I've never had a problem with bubbles with primary elements. I just torch it and then I'm done. Go ahead, Canela. All right. All right. Uh, what do you record your videos with? Uh, Rose, I record um, with my cell phone. I have an iPhone 11. 
Uh, I saw a question farther up. How do I, what program do I use to edit my videos? Um, I just use the iMovie app. That's how I put them together. Um, there's also an app called InShot, I-N Shot. And that's what I use to put those little GIF, um, you know, funny things in there or like text. Those are the only two things I use. I do everything from my cell phone. I upload it to YouTube from my cell phone. And then I will go onto my computer and do the description edits through there because it's easier to type on a keyboard than on my phone. That's what I do. All right. I have one from Gail Rogalski. Why do I get pits in my resin? Over torching or torching when the, the resin is starting to heat up will cause pitting. Also, you know, if you do a painting that has silicone in it and you didn't wash it off good, that will cause pitting and rejection around areas where the silicone is still there. Sorry, I'm trying to put the PayPal links. Can you take the next question, Tammy? Sure. I saw, I keep seeing this one. Um, people want to know about getting the Amsterdam white in Canada. Now, I, I know in Canada, the pricing for art supplies is absolutely ridiculous. Oh, uh, yeah. So, do you, where did you get yours? Did you get it off Amazon? Sorry, what did I get off Amazon? The white, uh, Amsterdam white acrylic paint when you had no. bought it. In Canada, you can buy Amsterdam paints from Curry's Art Store and uh, Dessert's in Ottawa sells it. So I buy it from those two um, places. I'm sure there's other places too, but those are the two that I know of for Amsterdam paints. Curry's Art Store and Dessert's in Ottawa or Quebec or wherever it is. Quebec or something. Okay. You want me to take the next one? Uh, I, I can take it. Let's see what we got here. Okay, just uh, scrolling up here. If you've got one, go ahead. I'm looking. Yeah, there's one here from uh, Bonnie. She just started, wants to finish her varnish. My first painting, what's the easiest? If you want to go the easiest, cheapest route, that would be like a Mod Podge, gloss Mod Podge. If you want to go a step up, then that would be a uh, varnish, like a Liquitex high gloss varnish or a spray varnish. When I used to resin paintings, very occasionally I used to uh, varnish paintings, I would use a spray varnish because I found that easier. Just take it outside, spray it, let it dry, and spray another coat. But uh, those are the, the most simplest forms to varnish. Mod Podge would be the cheapest. Yeah, Windsor Newton has a great spray varnish. I've used it. It's really good. Yeah. All right. So I have a question from AJ's Paintings. When you are shipping paintings internationally, how do you tackle duties and taxes? Do you leave it for the buyer to find out? Um, I've never had that problem. Anyone who's bought anything of mine internationally, I ship it and mark it as a gift. And my clients have never had to pay duties on any of it. Um, as long as you mark it as a gift, I've never had an issue, nor have I ever had a complaint from any of my international clients saying that they had to pay a fee over the border when they received it. So just mark it as a gift. All right. We have Dana from Connecticut. Hey, Dana. Uh, I have a commission and want to know your process, how long it takes. Uh, for me, it depends. It could be, you know, a couple of days and then, you know, I resin it and ship it out a week or two later. Or if I have a lot of things going on, it could be a couple of weeks. It all depends on the time schedule that you have to work on. I know Canela has some, right, Canela, that take you quite a while. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, um, I've got... Uh, Clara Rivas, how long can you store paint in your mixed uh, and once mixed with Floetrol and water in the squeeze bottles? My squeeze bottles, I've got about 50 of them in the low leaf Effie bottles. There are some colors that I rarely ever use, like hot pink or something. They've been sitting in those bottles for over a year. I kid you not, and they are fine. As long as that bottle is airtight and that lid is closed, there is no issue with the water, the paint, and the flow trial sitting in those bottles. I've never experienced any issues 
So like I said, as long as it's airtight, there should be no problems. I've had paint in there for a long time. Hold on a minute. Denise, I don't know where you can get level three canvases wholesale. I wish I knew. I'd love to buy wholesale. I buy everything from Michael's though. All right, Karen, do you use the primary and primary elements interference paints over opaque paints only? No, you don't have to. You can layer them on top of each other and you'll just get these gorgeous rainbow effects. It's all in personal preference what you want to do. I like to layer them on top of an opaque paint because I feel like they shine even brighter, but that's just me. You can use them all by themselves on a white or black background, preferably black. You'll see them a lot better on a black background because any interference paint works like that. Uh, Anna Keen, after spraying varnish and not glossy, can Liquitex gloss be used on top of the spray varnish? It can. I had a painting that I did put some primary elements on. And as we all know, if you add a liquid um, uh, varnish on there, it would reactivate the primary elements and you would end up with a little bit of bleeding. Right, Tammy? So what I did was I sprayed my canvas with uh, Windsor Newton spray varnish. And then when that was dry, I applied my Liquitex high gloss varnish and there were no issues. So yes, you can. Yeah, and another, another thing about that, you can brush on primary, uh, brush on varnish on primary elements, but you can't keep go over the same spot. One more stroke. Than once. You, you go one stroke, yeah. one stroke all the way across the canvas, let it dry, and then go the opposite direction with the brush in the next layer. And then... If you do a third layer, go back the other way again. Almost like, I forgot, Leslie told me the name of it. It's almost like a weaving pattern, but don't go over the same area twice, especially if you're using a varnish that has water in it. Liquitex High Gloss has water in it. Primary elements are a water-soluble product, so if you let it sit on there too long, it'll, you know, or you keep going over it, it'll reactivate them. Okay. Uh, thank you, Shirley. <laughs> when you're done, <laughs> mention, call my name out so I know you're done because of that lag. I don't know if you're done talking or not. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. No, I, I cut you off because Shelly corrected me, gave me the word. I said, thank you. Go ahead. Okay. So Kathy Hoyer says, how do you distinguish your stored paints for the type of project you're doing? Different techniques require different paint consistencies. I don't have this issue because all I do are Dutch pours. So all my squeeze bottles are mixed for ratios for Dutch pours. When we did the switcheroo collaboration and I had to do a ring pour, I made colors. I made the colors in the little two ounce Dixie cups or two or three ounce, whatever they are. So I made colors specifically for that pour. But if you want to do a specific technique all the time, get bottles, fill up your bottles with that technique's consistency. If you're the type of person who's going to do multiple techniques and all kinds of different things, then you need to be mixing paint every time you need to do a new pour. That's me. <laughs> That's Tammy, yeah. Okay, Some you're up, Tammy. What, go ahead. You're up. Okay. Um, somebody just asked about the bloom technique here it is sheila bassett tammy i believe the only sealing product for the sheely art pour is resin shelly art pour excuse me is this correct in my opinion it's the only one that really makes the colors pop but you can absolutely varnish them uh if you wanted to i'm Are done yeah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have Gerda May asking, can you use two different resins in the same batch, like mixing art resin and crystal? I would say no. Um, they're different companies. They're different products. They're made differently. You can't mix two, two different companies in two different products together. I would say a very, very strict no to that one. Now, uh, I got to say on that one, I did try it one time and it worked, but I would not recommend it. Don't I would not recommend it. Yeah. It okay. did work, but I would not recommend it because maybe I just got lucky. <laughs> yeah, and if it doesn't dry right and it dries tacky and then you wonder what happened, 
I, I wouldn't waste resin mixing stuff up like that and then potentially ruining one of your favorite pieces. I, I wouldn't do it. I would never. Okay. Um, w. Rosla says... She's not using silicone. She's using Canela's cell activator formula, and the cells are too small. Canela does not have a cell activator on. I don't. I don't know. No, I don't know what that what that is. Yeah. Um. So I just lost it here. Where was it? Uh. Janine Kohler says, Canela, I saw you did some dominoes. Gorgeous. Is the resin mix the same to do those? Yep. Same way. I don't change anything. I will do a video on dominoes soon. Um, you know, just stay tuned. I'm just pretty busy. Um, oh, Adriana Smith. Hi, little, little princess. Um, that's my little, my little buddy who really loved my shimmer and shine um, way back. Hi. I'm really <laughs> How cute. <laughs> All right, Sarah Mack asked the question. So are you varnishing the balloons, Sarah? Is that what you're trying to do or are you resining it? I just, if you use varnish on primary elements, you have to do, what's it called again, Shelly? <laughs> the cross patch technique where you one stroke with the, the brush, with the varnish on it, one stroke, all along the canvas, do not go over the same area twice, let it dry and then repeat. Are you good? Yeah, I'm sorry. I keep forgetting to tell you go. <laughs> I don't know if you're done talking or not. I'm um, gonna <laughs> so Saba CH asks, how do you keep your painting clean after you resin them? Um, I assume you mean, how do I keep them from getting like dust or hair or anything as they're drying if that is what you mean um i pour and do all my work in my studio in the basement uh i typically do it at nighttime um and then after i'm done i get out of there and i do not go back um no one's allowed down there no one's allowed to walk down there um i just shut the door i walk out and then there's nothing there to create any dust, uproot any dust or anything like that. So I never have that issue. I know not everybody has a studio and can do it, that kind of thing. And you do it in your kitchen or in your dining room. Try and do it late at night after everyone's gone to bed and, you know, cover it with one of those picnic mesh um, canopies. You can find those on Amazon. Um, it's just like a picnic mesh um, for food to keep the bugs off. You can try using that as well. Tammy? Okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, Hit that wooden, thumbs up, people. Wooden canvases. Lori Fincer wants to know, do you have to prime wooden canvases? Now, it depends on what you're going to be doing with this wooden canvas. Now, I always, when I do a painting on a, a piece of wood, if it's a good solid piece of wood, I know that I personally am going to be doing at least two to three layers of resin when the painting is dry. So I don't care if I get air bubbles from the wood breathing because I'm you're never going to see them once the resin goes on. So I try to save myself a little elbow grease that way. But it is recommended when you work on wood that you prime the, the wood first to stop it from breathing or off gassing, it's called. It, you'll see a, it depends on the wood too. It, you'll see a bunch of uh, little bubbles coming up. MDF is just basically pressed sawdust. So it really doesn't happen with that. We're talking natural wood. To be safe, I would just put a layer on it and uh, let it dry and then go about your business. All right. Done. Sorry. That's okay. Uh, just looking for a question here. Um, just I'll answer Kale Amour, Juno and Echo are actually outside because they were roughhousing and going crazy. So I put them outside, but at some point I'm going to have to bring them in because it is cold out there. Um, so let me look. 
Uh, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Looking for a question. Tammy, if you have one, go ahead. I'm looking for a question. Okay. Sandra's world. What medium do you mix primary elements with in a Dutch pour? If you don't have the poly pour or the vivid enamel that's sold with it, I have a video um, on my channel. I can email, you can email me or by Tammy at yahoo.com. I'll send you that video. I came up with a little concoction that actually worked for the primary elements when you don't have the products that they're intended to be used with. So uh, it's a, a blend of, a little bit of Floetrol, a little bit of gloss medium, some water, um, and some glue. So maybe there was a little, I can't remember if there's pouring medium or not, but if you email me, artbytamiyahoo.com, I will send you that video. Go. Go. Um, I actually remembered. <laughs> Jill, Jill Rob asks, and I love this question, what do you say to people who claim this isn't an art form? I'd like to say a lot of things, but we're on live YouTube, so I can't. Um, people who think this is an art, everyone's entitled to their own opinion. And I, you know, this was actually just a post that was put up by uh, Rinska this morning on her Instagram where someone said, my child can do this. This is an art. Look, my put paint on a canvas and ta-da. You know what? Everyone's entitled to their own opinion. If you don't think it's art, it's not art. Like, look at Keelan Schaub. For those of you who don't know him, he's a Canadian artist with, he does those big paint pendulum pours and like splatters paint everywhere. The guy is so popular and people say, oh, anybody can do that. No, not everybody can do that. You know, people say, oh, you're blowing paint with a hairdryer. Anybody can do that. No, not everybody can do that. So, you know what? It's art to me. I know it's art to Tammy. It's art to all of us. We all love it. It's, you know, therapeutic for a lot of us. It's, you know, de-stresses us and everything. You can call art whatever you want. I think it's art. For those people who don't think it's art. <laughs> I have two words. Jackson Pollock. <laughs> Go, <laughs> <No. Tammy. laughs> all right. Pam. Pam. Okay. Have you ever had a resin piece poured into a mold that has gouges down the side? I'm assuming when you pull it out. No, that has not ever happened to me. Is there maybe did you look at the mold? Is there some type of type of uh, imperfection in the mold itself? Because I've never had that happen. No, There's, the sides are always shiny. Go on. Pam Weininger, Canela, can you resin over a painting that has been varnished? Yes, you can. I've done it. I did it for my client, Ben, um, who I sent him a piece in varnish. And then he asked for two more pieces to make it a triptych. He sent me back the original piece that was varnished and I resin them all and it was perfect. So yes, um, you can do that. And before I throw it over to you, Tammy, I saw a comment in here. Um, will you be doing the wood cutouts again? Eh, probably not. Um, they're very time consuming and, um, shipping them was, uh, hard because they're so fragile and these postal people treat some packages like they're soccer balls. If you had seen some packages that I got pictures from, like I may have sent over a hundred and maybe five of them arrived broken, which I had to redo new ones and send out new ones. Um, but because they're so fragile, I was literally biting my nails, waiting for the clients to receive their packages, wondering and hoping and crossing my fingers that they weren't broken. So they're just too fragile. So I don't think I'll be doing those anymore. Tammy. All right. I'm going to answer one from Rose. I don't know if she's talking to me or both of us, but she asked, how long have you been painting? I have been artistic my whole life. I have been doing this type of art for probably four years. Uh, before that, I did a lot of mixed media art. Um, I still do a lot of mixed media art. Um, for you that don't know what that is, that's something like this, where you take a canvas and okay. you, you add all kinds of embellishments and dyes. And this is where I first found color art when I was starting this years and years ago. <laughs> but 25 years I've been selling art that that's my answer <laughs> selling oh. doing creating everything jewelry everything <laughs> so that's Tammy's answer my answer yeah. is honestly I don't have any painting background I did not go to school for it 
Um, so I, my sister-in-law is actually an artist. She does actually amazing oil painting portraits. And she's the one who got me into um, pouring, acrylic pouring. And that was back in like September of 2018. So I've been doing it since then. Um, and that's it. I don't have any background in art or anything like that, but I'm loving every step of the way and couldn't be happier with what I'm doing. All right. Well, then let me find another one. You find one. I got to let my dogs in. They're just clawing the bejeebers out of my door. Okay, Joy, do you mix mica powders with pouring medium, and how do you keep the colors going to pale? Um, an actual pouring medium, depending on the brand, you can use an actual pouring medium. Um, it's been my experience, though, no matter what the brand is, that a pouring medium does not have enough binder in it to hold the pigments to the canvas. So when it dries, if you rub your hand on the canvas, you'll you'll get some of the color off on your hands. And then when you go to varnish, you have a, a even bigger problem. Primary elements really need to have a, a good binder in them. Floetrol is definitely not a binder. Um, it's just a paint extender that's meant for painting your house in the your walls in your house. Um, it eliminates brush strokes, things like that. Uh, the reason why Floetrol was used to begin with, I've been told the story, is because Golden ran out of their pouring medium, which was GAC 800, and somebody along the way figured out that Floetrol worked really well in acrylic pouring, so that's how that became. But taking a, a pot, dry powder of any form and just mixing it into Liquitex, it's been my experience that it does just doesn't have enough binder in it. So you want something that has a really good binder. Gloss medium and varnish from Liquitex is, has a good binder. Uh, glue wall can be considered a binder. You can make a little concoction. Again, I break, go back to that video that I made where if you have primary elements and you wanna do a Dutch pour, but you don't have those right products, there's substitutes for them, so. Again, if anybody wants to see that video of using primary elements in the Dutch board, just email me, artbytammyyahoo.com, and I will send you the link. Go. All right, so I'm going to address two quick questions here. Cindy Caputo says, how long do you have to wait to varnish? Um, Tammy, you can chime in with your opinion. This is what I've been doing for the last two plus years. Um, I know everyone has their own opinion on this. When my paintings are fully dry to the touch, if I can literally do this to the top of my canvas and it is fully dry, I will resin it or I will varnish it. I don't varnish anymore, but it's the same thing. You can do either or. Um, a lot of people say, oh, you need to wait three to four weeks for it to cure before you can do that. If I did that, I would have about 100 paintings sitting in my basement and then I'd have to like varnish them all at once. I would, there's no way, but I know people do do that. Is there a reason for that? Maybe Tammy knows. I know some people say, well, mine has silicone in it. You need to give the silicone a chance to dry. With my Dutch pours, water, flow, trial, and paint, I don't need to wait that long. If it's different with silicone, Tammy, which I'm pretty sure it is, feel free to answer that question. Yeah, well, it depends on the products you use. If you're using paint and water, just like the flow, trial, and paint, it, it's, it's fine after a few days as long as it's dry. Um, but if you have silicone, then you have to wash, you have to literally wash that canvas. You have to get it off of there somehow. Now I've used a lot of silicone in the past and I've tried the baby powder trick and it doesn't work. Um, the only thing that really, really works is taking some Dawn dish soap with a very, uh, lightly damp rag, rubbing it really, really good and quickly rinsing it off, okay? Now that's only with two paints that are permanent, you know? You don't wanna do that with like primary elements. Uh, but it, it's, it depends on the, the products you're using. Again, if you're using things that take longer to dry, Floetrol, flow flow believe it or not, does dro slow down the drying time, but it depends on your environment, 
Yeah, I mean, if you're way up in elevation, it could take longer. So, you know, I've always resined my paintings within the, the week after I've done them. They're dry and I go on. Yeah. Um, so uh, Ahmed Rick, Rick P says, can I resin a 24 by 36 inch canvas? You can. Um, I resin 15 by 30, 12 by 36 um, with no issues. Now I do use the level three gallery wrapped canvases. If you do want to resin a larger piece, um, you might want to um, turn it upside down and then um, put support in it like cardboard, right, Tammy? So you want to support and put cardboard in between underneath the wooden frame just to support it and make it harder for the larger canvases. Tammy? Yep. I just had one here that I wanted to answer. Um, no, I missed it, I think. Uh, crafty Healing Arts. How many coats of resin do you usually apply? I apply one. I know Tammy does two to three. So it's personal preference. Um, if I do a piece and then after I've done it, I see a hair or something in it for whatever reason, then I will apply a second coat. Um, but I typically only apply one. But I know Tammy adds at least two to three layers. So preference. Yeah. Uh, Casey Taylor, here's one. I resined a piece that looked like glass, glass after drying overnight. Came home from work and it had bubbles along the edges. My thermostat set to 68 after I left. Is that why I got bubbles? So I notice when you're resining a canvas, sometimes the edges look like there's like little tiny bubbles around the edges. Now, if you're using wood, then that is the air breathing and you needed to prime your wood before you did your pour on it. Um, but I do notice sometimes some of the canvases, they have little bumps and it almost looks like little bubbles in the resin around the edge. But um, if it, there are big bubbles on the side of your canvas, that's from the, uh, and it's wood, that's from breathing, off gassing, go. Uh, first, I want to say hi, Massey boys. I see they're in hello. here. People are saying hello to the Massey boys. Jeremy and Lee, welcome, gentlemen. Um, have I have either of you ever used unicorn spit? I haven't. I'd love to try it, but it's ridiculously expensive. Um, and yeah, no, I don't want to spend that kind of money, but I'd love to try it. But no, I haven't. Tammy, have you? I think I tried it maybe once a long, long time ago. And it just smelled horrible and I didn't want to use it. <laughs> Speaking of yeah. smelling horrible, um, there was a question here. I forgot who asked it. Oh, Sean Marie, if Floetrol smells like rotten eggs, can you still use it? I know that you guys in the U.S. have had serious issues with your Floetrol. Oh, yeah. Really bad. I've never had that issue. Thank goodness. Um, I've never had a thing. But Tammy, since it's a uh, U.S. seems to be a U.S. problem, do you want to answer that one? What, uh, what I do now when I go to Home Depot and buy my Floetrol, oh. I'm literally in the, the aisle pulling my mask down quick and sniffing. <laughs> like sniffing glue yeah. when you were a kid? Yeah, yeah. And, you know, I got caught a couple of times in there looking at me like, boy, this woman's got an issue. Ma'am, what are you doing over there, ma'am? <laughs> but, yeah, you know, and something that flow trawl that stinks like that does not work the same. There's something wrong with it. Either when they, it switched over, this happened when Corona first hit. Either they yeah. ran out of a main ingredient and substituted it with something for a while, but I'll open the bottles and smell them. I find now I haven't had a bad one in months, though, so I think maybe it's safe to say it's over. I hope so for your sakes, because yeah, I've never had the so issue, too. luckily, for me. Um, all right, so let's see here. Um, do, 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 do. Uh, Tammy, there's a question in here about... Um, I want to use, I missed the question, but it went something along the lines of, I want to use oil paints over my acrylics. Can you do that? Oh, that's something I've never tried. Yeah, me neither. So I, I can't really but, you know something. If you're talking about hand painting, I don't see why 
it, it wouldn't work on a dry acrylic background. I thought, yeah, I, I don't know the answer to that one. I'm sorry. Okay, so. Okay, Canela from Christine S. Canela, why sometimes will my layered colors sink or spread out while sitting? Is it because my color or base are too thin? Exactly. It's because all your paints are not the same consistency. So if your base paint is a lot thinner than your colored paint, then yes, it will sink. Um, so you have to try, this is why I use a scale. I swear by my scale. I do not, I know everyone's different. I know Tammy eyeballs a lot of things. Um, yeah. But for me, for my Dutch pours, it's literally down to the gram for everything I do. Um, so I use the scale religiously here um, for everything that I do when I make my paints. So if it's not the same consistency, it's not going to react the same. You're going to have differences in, in issues. So try your best to make them all the same consistency. Yeah. Tammy. Yeah. Um, where can we dispose of Floetrol and old paints in the U S in my town? There's a, the, believe it or not, the fire department, I can bring it down there and then they take it and dispose of it. But if you have like a city dump or um, just call, call wherever you live, call your local city office or town hall and ask them where you can dispose of these items because there is, there are places and what I do is I have an old Floetrol jug that I pour my old crappy paints into. I'll scrape them up off of the table, put them in a cup and pour it into the Floetrol jug. Go. Okay, so I highlighted this question. Uh, well, it's okay, so it's not a question. Well, yes, it is. So Teresa S. asks me, I would like to purchase your art from my new home. Is there a place to see what is available? Please email me at canelasiracle at gmail.com. I no longer put things up on Etsy. So just please email me canelasiracle at gmail.com and we can discuss that. But there was another question here. Um, Canela from Zara. Oh gosh, I can't even, I'm not even going to attempt that last name. I'm sorry. Canela, could you please let us know how do you dry your art? Um, so when you see me do my videos on my table, after I'm done, I leave it. I do not touch it. I do not move it. Uh, because when you pick it up and move it somewhere else, where you move it to may not be level. When I put my canvases down and I start my recording, I know 100% that those canvases are level because I made sure they were level with my little leveler. The second you move it to somewhere else, may not be level, you leave it, and then guess what? Your paint's gonna go flying right off. It'll move, it'll shift, your composition will be ruined. So I leave it where it sits for at least two days. Once the edge of the paint on the canvas starts drying, you got a nice layer that's already dried, maybe two days later, I will then move it to a different spot. But until then, I will not move it. I do not move it until it dries or at least the edges dry. Tammy? I've ruined a lot of paintings moving them. <laughs> oh, did I? And I stopped yeah. doing it. Yeah. All right, Heather Murphy, is there a recommended temperature for paints, like for usage and storage? I'll be honest with you, the room that I'm in gets down to about 63 degrees and my paints are not affected. Uh, resin, however, I cannot keep it here because it's just it will get really, really thick. And it, 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 you want to keep it more in a, a climate-controlled room. Um, but paint, I've never had any issues with them having any problems with cold weather. I, it's 12 degrees in Connecticut, so, you know, and they're all working. If anything, maybe they get a little bit thicker, but other than that, there, there really is no issue what's going on back there he's chewing on a bone on the floor and he's making so much noise can you hear that it's so cool on your bed <laughs> little monkey um so uh, there's two things i wanted to address here one's for both of us tammy and yeah. now i just totally lost it and got distracted one question was do i prime or do anything with my coasters before i do anything with them no my coasters have that gloss um shine to them already I do not do anything. I just pour directly on them. But Tammy, there was a question from a viewer. I'm sorry, I didn't catch your name. Asking us what our favorite brands of paints are. So for me, um, 
I love Amsterdam paints. I use a lot of Liquitex and Pebeo. Those iridescent paints from Pebeo are to die for. I love those. Uh, I would love to use more golden paint, but that stuff is so expensive here in Canada. It is ridiculous how expensive it is. So I don't use golden. I'd love to, but I don't. But definitely tops are Amsterdam for me and Pebeo Studio Acrylics and Liquitex Basics. Those three. Tammy? Okay. Well, you know, I'm going to say color art are my most favorite. <laughs> but for okay. as far as tube paints go, I like uh, Holbein and I like uh, probably Liquitex. I like the, the soft body, the smaller bottles. And, um, but I, I'll use any brand, you know, really. I, I, I just love to paint and it's, it's really not about that for me. You know, as long as I see the color, I'm happy. Yeah, I got to use your Holbein paints too. I, the gift that you sent me for Christmas, I still got to use those. So there's a question here um, from Krista K. Parsley asking, I assume me, um, can I ask why not Etsy, wondering if there's a bad experience? No, not at all. Um, no bad experience. It's actually a great platform for people to sell their art. Um, and I did use it for quite a while, but I found for me personally, um, God, that hurts. <laughs> um, I found personally for me, when I did a video on YouTube, people would email me and say, hey, I want to buy that. And so I would sell the pieces faster than I can get them up onto Etsy. Um, and the other thing that I don't like about the Etsy platform is they take a chunk out of your profit. So when you sell something on Etsy, they take a cut out of that. They take a cut out of your profit. They take a cut for transaction fees. They take some other fee and some other fee. So they actually take money from you um, so that, and when you post something on Etsy, it costs you money. It's only like 20 or 25 cents, but that adds up after a while. So personally for me, that's why I don't like to use Etsy because, and I'm able to sell my art by you guys viewing my YouTube, my YouTube channel or on my Instagram. So, but for other people who don't have a YouTube channel, um, Etsy is a great place to sell your art if you don't mind them taking a chunk out of your profits. Tammy? All right. So I want to answer the Masty Boys wants to know what is one color we could not live without. But I'm going to give two answers because I need to say Wild Jasmine from Primary Elements is my favorite powder. And then for colors, I love, love, love Thalo Toy. That That's my other color. <laughs> so... I didn't see that question, but I'm going to answer that one too. So you guys all know I'm all blues. So my favorite two, okay, obviously blues, but I love the phthalo blue, the, the phthalo blue and Prussian blue by Liquitex Basics. But I'm, I also love greenish blue by Amsterdam. That's a gorgeous color. And dioxazine purple, like purples and blues are my thing, but the Amsterdam greenish blue is one of the colors I use almost all the time in my paints, in my pores, as well as the Pebeo iridescent blue green. Those are my go-tos. Tammy? All right. So let's see. I first want to say hi to Lisa, Tracy. I didn't see them sneak in. Lisa and Tracy, Lisa Wyatt. Uh, oh. Let's see. Hi, Tammy. I'm trying to get to the feed to stop so I can read it. How... I have wood slices with bark. How do I prime them before using resin? And how do I stop the bark from peeling off? Those are pain, to be honest. I, I know what you're talking about. What I did was I lightly taped around the edge. A little tiny bit of it came off. I probably shouldn't have even taped it. What you want to do with those is maybe, maybe, maybe just try to be careful with your resin. If the, the round is this big, pour a puddle half the size and slowly with a stick spread it out uh, to try to keep it on the top and stop it from going over the edge. You're, you could try to paint them to prime them first, but honestly, I would just do... Actually, I had some of those somewhere here. I wish I could show you, but I would just paint them lightly a little bit first on the top do the resin design as carefully as you can torch bubbles let it dry 
And then if you want to do a really thin top layer of resin on it, you could always paint it on with a, a brush that you don't care about because you'll have to throw it away after. Paint a little clear coat over the top of it and let it dry. But those are a pain with the bark on the side because they do peel off. <laughs> this little dog, I keep putting his bone on the carpet so he doesn't make noise and he keeps picking it up and bringing it back and sitting beside me. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Um, Shelly Jackson asks, how can I get 24 karat gold? I cannot find it anywhere. I can't find it anywhere here in Canada. Um, they're sold out everywhere, but I had some lovely, lovely, amazing viewers, um, send me two big jugs of it from the U S so here in Canada, they're like sold out everywhere. Tammy, I don't know about the U S if there's a place where they can get it. It's the same here with the 24 karat. It is. Uh, Color Art has the new uh, Golden Honey and Egyptian Coin. The Golden Honey is very close to being, it's really, really close to the uh, 24 karat. I love it. It's got twice the sparkle. <laughs> uh, Nadine Latai says, help, my first coat of resin did not take in a couple of spots. I did not use oil. Can I add another coat? Yes, you can. Um, you can add another coat. And Tammy, if I'm not mistaken, you don't need to sand it. I've never sanded a, a second coat. No, I, I usually don't sand either. Yeah. Yeah, you can definitely put another coat to fix it. Yeah. All right, let's see. Uh, here's a good one. Joy Clark, will putting resin over a varnish with dips dips in it even out? It should. It should, uh, if not on the first coat, it definitely will on the second coat. So just go ahead and pour your layer, your first layer of resin on. Uh, make sure the canvas is level wherever you're pouring it. And again, you have to be careful about torching. If you're if you do your piece and you torch it for the first half hour. After it's done, if you're using a good resin, you'll be fine. But if you go back two hours later and it's still a little bit pliable and you can pick a piece of dust out, you may get a pit in it. And if you torch, you're definitely going to get pits in it. So, but you can definitely do that. It, it'll level out. All right, go. Um, uh, sorry, Adriana Smith says, Canela, Adriana Rose would like to know if you could send us a picture of Juno and Echo. She would like mom to print it to display it in our home. Shoot me an email. I'll send you some pictures. No problem. She's so cute. All right. So let's see any, let's see questions, questions. Uh, do, do, do. Tammy, if you've got one, go. Uh, Tammy, I have a Tumblr turner. Use the dyed resin to pour on a glass bulb, but the resin just dripped off. Do I need to let the resin to sit? Uh, let the resin sit to thicken up first. Um, if you have a tumbler turner and it's continuously spinning, it shouldn't just fall right off. It shouldn't be able to, because I, I also have one of those turners that I use. Um, if it's just sitting there and you're not, the piece isn't continuously spinning, then yeah, it's going to drip off. Um, you can try painting it on with a brush again. That that would always work. But are you spinning the piece? Because it really shouldn't be falling off. So there's two comments here. Um Aline King, can I get the paint to use on Amazon shipped to South Africa? I don't know. Um, when I try and buy stuff on Amazon US to ship to Canada, they will not ship it to me. Anything that is liquid or anything like that, we have um, laws or whatever you want to call it um, for stuff that comes over the border. And I can't even buy spray paints or anything like that. Every time I put something in my cart and I go to buy it, it says, we're sorry, we don't ship to Canada. We can't ship this product. So I don't know what your rules are or your laws are for shipping to South Africa. Um, so I don't know that. 
And then the other thing I had is just lost and gone. So I don't know um, where that went. Oh, I had it here and I wanted to answer it. Go ahead, Tammy. I'm going to look for it. All right. Miss Joan Rose. Hello, Joan. Um, how do you mix color arts hot orchid with what pouring medium? That paint already has everything it needs in it to be able to, to just thin it out with a little water and pour. If you want to extend it, you can add whatever you normally use. I've seen people use Floetrol, although Floetrol will dull the color a little bit. Um, your, your regular pouring mediums, if you wanted to do that, like a liquid text, but it's not needed. You can just thin it down with some water and pour. And, and yes, just so you know, if your other paints are mixed with flow trawl or pouring medium, whatever, you can use it with that. Uh, it's all up to you. Go ahead. Uh, I found it. Clara Rivas asks, what flow trawl do I use? I use the U.S. flow trawl. I'd love to try the Australian flow trawl. I know, Tammy, you've tried it, um, but it's stupendously expensive, and I don't want to try it that bad if it's that expensive for me to get it over here from Australia or wherever I can get my hands on it. But I use the U.S. slash same flow trawl that they have in U.S. and Canada. But I know, Tammy, you use you have used Australian flow trawl. Yeah, and it, it's a really good product, but, you know, something, it's, to me, I'm just not going to pay $70 for, I know I have it here somewhere. I would love to show you how small the bottle is. Yeah. Oh, it's back there. Hold on, I just want to show you. So while you're doing that, I'll just answer Michelle Anderson. Why do I prefer Artist Loft White Flow versus just the tube paint? Because it's cheaper. You get a big <laughs> bottle like this of white, and it's, for me, $12.99, and as opposed to a tube, which is a lot less paint and more and more expensive. So that's the only reason, cheaper. That, that this is a is small bottle. $70. 70 And it's going to last you how long? Not Well, if you're using it just for the bloom, for the cell activator, yeah. it'll last a long time. Not using it in the undergarments? No. No. All right. Let's see. Just trying to find a question here. What are, who, what? Someone says someone passed away. What, what am I missing here? Oh, uh, they're answering about Clyde. One of my viewers asked, oh, you know, he was better. Yeah, he passed away last month, and I just lost another one in the beginning of this week, I believe. So, oh, I mean, yeah, it, it's been a rough, rough go. But sure. I've learned a very valuable lesson. Do not adopt six cats, one after the other, in the first year, because then they all get old together. And then they all start leaving you at the same time. And it's been a misery. So. Bye, Mina. Thanks for coming. Bye, Mina. All right. So uh, what are the ratios for resin to canvas? Very simple. If you want to know how much resin you need for your canvas, go to artresin.com. Put in the dimensions and it will give you a number. If it says 10 ounces of resin you need, that's five ounces of hardener, five ounces of resin. But I always made a couple of ounces extra because they don't factor in the sides of the painting. So if it tells you to make 10, make 11 or 12 just to be on the safe side. And have a, a silicone mold by you in case you have a little leftover, you can make a little knickknack. Yeah. Yeah, so as Tammy said, it's on Art Resin's website, but if you just go on Google and Google resin calculator, it'll pop up, link will pop up, click on the link, and there's your, it'll have you put in your dimensions of your canvas. So just Google resin calculator. Yeah. All right. Um, Canela, what brand are your canvases? So I buy all my canvases from Michaels. Um, they're all Artist Loft uh, Level 3 gallery wrapped canvases. However, my Michaels doesn't sell certain sizes for canvases that I've always wanted to try out. 
So if you saw one of my last triptychs, I have these new canvases. Um, so I bought some Windsor and Newton canvases from a different art store. They were so much more expensive, but I really wanted to try these new sizes. It was eight by 24, which Michaels doesn't sell. So I really love the size. So I actually bought more. So now I have um, from another company as well, but 95% of, 99% of my canvases are all artist loft level three gallery wrapped from Michaels. Tammy? All right. Susan asks, I have seen your resin wood with a black base. Why paint the wood black when your resin color is black? Because sometimes when you tint resin with any type of pigment, it's not totally opaque and you'll be able to see through it and see the wood. So putting that black layer of paint not only preps the canvas, primes it and stops it from breathing the, the piece of wood, but it also ensures that you're not gonna see brown wood through your black surface. Believe me, there are some times when you think you add in enough of that pigment and it's not and you can still see through. So that's why I do things like that. Go. Um, Gerda says, can you spray alcohol instead of torching to get rid of bubbles so you can save your molds? Yes. Don't ever, ever torch your molds. Um, I've done that and I've ruined my molds. Um, so I'm actually working on something right now, which you guys will see soon in an upcoming video the, and the results. But you can spray isopropyl alcohol. This is what I've been doing. I spray it on the mold and it gets rid of the bubbles for you. I have used a heat gun really quickly, like really, really quick, but uh, like Tammy from your experience, but I've used a, a torch on my molds, even, even going quickly like that. And believe you me, it burns and I've ruined my mold. So don't use um, a heat uh, torch on molds. Yep. And also if you're working with resin and you're trying to clean your hands, your gloves to keep going, don't use alcohol because uh, you can use alcohol if you're not using a torch. I've seen people, their hands go on fire and, you know, because they don't wait for the fumes to burn off. And even myself, I was doing a, a coaster with alcohol inks and I, there is a pain in the butt bubble right in the center. I said, you know what? I'm just going to torch right in that center. I'm not going to touch my, my mold and a little flame shot. I'm like, whoa. <laughs> Forget that, but yeah, be very careful. Baby wipes work the best when you're using resin to clean your hands, your gloves. I put I mean. a pack of those in my art room, actually. Mm -hmm. That's a good point. I did not know that. Yeah. Very good point. Oh, let's see. Um, Tammy, there's a question here for you from Deanne. Can you use primary elements in resin? Go. Okay. So here's the thing about that, all right? I know everybody wants to use primary elements in resin because, you know, money-wise, money, money wise, that's what you want to do, right? The thing is, is that primary elements are a water-soluble product, meaning you need water to make them dissolve. So whatever products you use with them usually have water in them. Resin is not water soluble it's it's an alcohol based product so when you go to mix them in on their own some of them be, they because you have to remember they're made with mica and they're made with ground color some of them will look like they're dissolving 100 percent. but then when you go look at your painting you're going to see little specks of undissolved color in it okay now Color Art sells a product called Art Fluid. And that specifically, if you were to take your primary elements with a few drops of that product and wet them down, then add them to your resin, then you can get them to work. But Resin Art sells a full line of resin specific colors that are the most magical colors. They're like the new glitz colors that have the really sparkly, sparkly effect. They're called Diamond Galaxy colors. And those are made for resin. But if you buy those, just know those definitely do not work in acrylic pouring. Go. 
Uh, hey, Tracy. Um, Tracy has a good point here. She says, I use a clothes steamer on the back of my canvases to tighten them because someone asked a good way to tighten your canvas. So thanks, Tracy, for that. Awesome idea. Hey, uh, Canella. Yeah. Bonnie, Bonnie Lawrence, I've seen her ask this a few times. The one, I think the one video you made on the bloom technique, number 131. It. Okay, that's that's the one she's referring to. I see. Did but, you change your cell activator recipe to not using Elmer's glue for that video? You know, when I did the bloom technique way back then and I figured out all the ingredients I needed to do that and I did that video, I pretty much stopped doing the bloom after that because it's hard, it's time consuming, and I wasn't getting gorgeous results like Tammy does and some other great artists do. So I kind of gave up on that. Um, but I have not changed my recipe from that video. Now, I'd like to get back into the bloom. I'd like to give it another go ahead and try new ingredients and see something, if I can find something better that works for me. Because now, since back then, because it's been a long time already, this thing has evolved. And a lot of people have found new methods, new products, new this, new that, that works. Tammy's got great stuff, great videos on it. Um, and I'd like to get back into it, but I can't until this lockdown is over because everything is closed. We are on literally house arrest here. We're not, we're literally at stay at home orders. We cannot leave the house and everything is closed. So until this crap, excuse my language, goes away, um, I can't go to the stores. But check out Tammy's videos. She's got amazing multiple bloom recipe videos. So check Tammy's channel for that. Tammy? All right, and I just wanted to go a little bit further with that and say that that recipe in that video that she did was just for that technique. She's never used that in her Dutch pours. It's nope. just that one technique. Okay. Just that. Yeah, 131, video 131 is strictly and specifically for the bloom technique with products that I found in Canada, okay, Canada. Mm -hmm. So I got a lot of people ask me, well, I'm using your recipe exactly, but I've changed this one ingredient. I can't help you. You change one ingredient, it changes the whole dynamic, it changes the whole recipe, it changes the whole chemical balance. Right, Tammy? So exactly. you, it's got to be the exact ingredients from, in my, from my video or nothing. But again, I, I want to try and restart that up, but not until this whole pandemic is over and I can buy new stuff. Yeah. All right, so Pete and Sarah Landwehr, does it matter if the glue used in pouring medium is white or clear? Does it really matter? No, it doesn't. Doesn't matter at all. You know, um, you, I've used both and got similar results, but, you know, that's just me. I don't know if anybody in the chat uses a clear glue and says that it works better or not, but I've used both and they both worked about the same. Um, Twyla Tull asks me, how long does a commission piece take, please? I mean, once I order a piece, how long until you start it? Um, it depends on what you're commissioning. Um, right now, I'm a good 10 to 12 weeks um, wait time. Um, but if it's something small, something quick, like a resin piece, I don't know. It depends what you want to commission. But if you're talking about a canvas, um, it's about a 10 to 12 week turnaround time from the time you put your deposit down. So I hope that answers your question, Tammy. All right. Let's see. What is the best way to start selling your art? Social media, if you ask me. Yeah. I mean, you know, create a Facebook page for yourself. Create an Instagram account for yourself. I do have an Etsy shop because I don't sell my art as fast as Miss Canella does. So I have to use Etsy. Um, but. It, you know, if I have to pay for a website and, and this and that, I'd rather just not have to put myself through the trauma of learning technology to get a website going and just use Etsy and pay their fee. But social media is the, the best way, you know, yeah. Instagram, all, all of them, really. I agree with Tammy and to, and to put my two cents in on that. Um, I'm just as technically challenged as Tammy, whether you choose to believe that or not. I really, I couldn't set up and people are like, yo, go daddy. It's so easy. Or those other, 
I still can't do it. Trust me. I tried. I still can't figure it out. And then having to pay for like a domain and this and that, not my thing. So social media is your friend. Okay. Um, you need to be the type. This is me at home. I kid you not. I wish I had my phone, but I'm constantly doing this. And that's probably why my thumbs hurt. I was complaining about my thumbs hurting so much. Um, if you're not the type who wants to be on your phone or on a computer a lot, and you're like, I don't want to be on the screen time all the time, this might be a little challenge for you because you need to be on all aspects of social media, Facebook, Instagram. I'm now on TikTok. at Tammy's on Etsy. Um, what other platforms are there? There's so many platforms, mm -hmm. believe it or not, Twitter, LinkedIn, you can even use those. You need to get yourself out there. And you need to post, I kid you not, one to two times a day. If you post one thing a, once a week or every two or three days, no one's going to notice. You need to post multiple times. So on Instagram, I do at least one or two posts a day, every day. Why? Because Instagram will catch that algorithm and will see, hey, this person's posting a lot. Let's push it. Let's push it. And that's how you get noticed. So you've got to be on your electronics all the time. I hate to say it, but you got to do it or else we, it, you're not going to be seen. Okay. So keep that in mind, Tammy. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm very bad. I'm not somebody that grew up with technology. I don't like Instagram and all this other stuff. You know, I'd rather just sit down and make something or what, but I'm t it's a full-time job. Yes. And you can see the difference between my Instagram and Canelo's, I have just hit 3,000 followers and she's at like almost 60 because I just can't keep up with my the problems in my hands and all that. You know, it's hard for me to, to answer emails and even clicking a heart on the comments. It's like, it really is a full-time job and it does pay off if you do it. Full-time job. Like yeah. when I had a nine to five job doing accounting, I don't, and then like, I don't even know how I did it. I don't know how I managed to survive doing a nine to five coming home and then doing art and then answering emails, questions, comments, private messages on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, all that. Now that I do this full time, I still don't have time. Um, it's insane. It's absolutely insane how busy it is. Yeah. All right. Roxanna Hennessy is asking, can she mix Stuart Semple's mirror paint in with acrylic paints for Dutch pour. A lacquer based paint. I cannot tell you the answer to that because I've never heard of the brand and I've never used a lacquer brand paint. But Me maybe in the feed has. If anybody has that answer for her, feel free to answer that one. Yeah, I, I don't know that either. Jenny Lee, Juno and Ecker are quiet. Yeah, they finally look at my dead dogs. What? two <laughs> finally finally okay let's find a question here um okay so bonnie lawrence asked should we be posting videos to youtube to sell our art that is a iffy question you could start a channel and post videos but no one will know you. Um, you have to get yourself out there again, back on social media, go on Facebook, go on Instagram, tell everyone you have a YouTube channel, but don't use YouTube as a way to sell your art. That's not what YouTube is for. Um, of course you can do whatever you want, but you, you might be setting yourself up for disappointment if it doesn't work out for you, but you could always try it. You never know but it is another me platform for social media. So if you want to try it, go ahead. Just, you know, it may work, it may not. So it, it's, it's, you know, like this. Tammy? All right. Uh, let's see. What is the best and cheaper company to ship the pieces you sell? That's a good question. I have learned to check both the United States Postal Service and UPS and FedEx because I was going to ship a painting once and the post office was telling me that it was going to be 70 75 dollars I then said you know what let me check UPS because you always assume these private companies are more money UPS was half the price it was like 35 dollars and I I was just so mad at myself because I had shipped so many 
uh, paintings through the United States Postal Service. So my recommendation is, is to cross check each company that on the internet, you can put in the dimensions and the weight and all that of your package and uh, get the price that way before you go down there. To answer that question from the Canadian side of things, um, I only use Canada Post. And the reason for that being is um, I have a business account with them. So, and it's very convenient for me to pack everything up, print my own label, slap it on the box, head it over, which is five minutes away to the post office. FedEx, UPS, Purolator are at least a 20 to 25 minute drive for me to get there. So it's not worth my time or the effort to go to those places. But here's, here's one thing that I'll tell you about shipping from Canada to US and US to Canada. Shipping from Canada to the US is a heck of a lot cheaper than shipping from the US to Canada. I cannot believe the astronomical charges that you guys in the US pay to ship stuff over here or even internationally. I don't know how that is, but I can ship like a 12 by 36 inch canvas for like 50 to 60 bucks, depending on what option the client chooses, whether it's a tracking, uh, you know, a tracked packet or express post with like insurance and stuff. So it depends on what the client chooses. However, here's the experience I've had with um, friends or clients or people who want to send me stuff from the U.S. here and they're not using USPS. When someone sends me something via FedEx, or UPS, guess what? About a month later, I get a bill in the mail saying that <laughs> I owe money for duty taxes, okay? I hate that. I love you guys for sending me stuff and, and gifts and prezzies and all kinds of stuff, but you know what? And they send these things in the mail and half the time I don't even get them. One day I got a collection agency sending me a letter saying, if you don't pay this FedEx bill of $15, we're sending you to collections. I freaked out. I was panicking. I'm like, what letter? I never got anything. So I had to call them up and I'm like, I never got anything. So I know, right, Tammy? Like I pay my <laughs> bills, come on. But this is the experience I've had with companies like FedEx and UPS, which is why I only stick to Canada Post and, you know, USPS. That's just my, what I, what's happened to me. All right. I'm going to bang out three questions really quick. Simple okay. ones. All right. Cindy Smith, how do you get great photos of your art to sell it? I use my cell phone. Me too. Uh, I like to go outside on a nice day and take pictures where it's natural light, but it's just my cell phone. Uh, Bonnie O'Hara, what is the smallest painting either of you will sell? I sell eight inch rounds all the time. It, there's no particular size uh, limit. Yeah, and then the other one, Denise Woody, I'm scared of, the, scared of the torch. Can I use a heat gun for bubbles? For acrylic pouring? No. Resin, yes. I got That's that funny. question today in an email and I don't know if it was the same person. But they said to me, I, I can't get a torch. Can I use a hairdryer or a heat gun for acrylic pouring? And I said, no, unfortunately, you can't. You need that torch. You need to pop those bubbles or you're going to end up with those teeny tiny microscopic ugly bubbles and all over your painting. So, yeah, you need a torch. And the heat gun with acrylic pouring will just create a crust on top of your paint. Yeah. So it's no good for that. Okay, go. All right. Um, some people were asking for me to paste uh, the links for the PayPal. So I'll do that again real quickly. For those of you who missed it, I have disabled the super chat and the super, um, super stuff or whatever it is you call it, super stickers, um, because it's been brought to my attention that uh, YouTube takes a huge chunk out of those donations. So I've disabled those for anyone who would like to donate to myself or to Tammy. Um, our PayPal links are right there in the comments. All right, let's see. Oh, and give it a thumbs up. Give us a thumbs up, people. Uh, mm -hmm. All right, so let's find. By the way, uh, Pete and Sarah, my son loves Lucas's channel. Ah, oh, thank you. Oh, really quick. You, Tammy, you look for a question. I'm going to say this real quick. To those of you who have been on my son's channel, I love you guys. You guys have been so supportive. Guess what? He brought his train table home today. We set it up. 
Um, just the table part tomorrow, I'm going to help him set up the track. So he's going to do a video on that. He's super excited to be home and have his train table. So to all of you who have been watching and running that playlist over and over and over and over again, thank you. I love you guys, Tammy. <laughs> okay. So do I add or either of us add inks or pigment to two paint to bump up the pigment? I don't, but you can. You you can if you want to. I personally don't know. Either do I, yeah. Yeah. Let's see here. I'm looking, Tammy, if you've got one, go. Yeah. Um, um Pete and Sarah asked, Do you all know if you can buy Amsterdam paints in a store anywhere in the US? I'm in Kansas. Neither Micros or Hobby Lobby carry them. Tammy, do you know where she can buy um, Amsterdam paints in the U.S.? Uh, no. Uh, I, I go to all the art stores and my Michaels, my Hobby Lobby, my Blick do not sell them. I have to get them online. Really? Uh, yeah, they, they don't. Uh, maybe some in other parts of the country they do, but... My local area here in Connecticut, I have to order them on online through uh, Blick, I believe, sells them online, but not in the store. Um, Tammy has a great question for us, Canella. Okay. She wants to know, when we swapped candy for Christmas, what was your favorite and what was mine? I'm going to put on. And I'm going to say my favorite was the coffee crisp coffee. bar and the hickory sticks. The hickory sticks. So I love the oots or oots, however you pronounce it. Honey barbecue. Those <laughs> chips were amazing. But the other thing I loved a lot, and I'm running low, so you're going to have to send me more. <laughs> this is the best I've ketchup. ever had. <laughs> this stuff is a black cherry ice cube gum. I am like savoring every piece. I'm running low. I'm run look, I only have like five or six pieces left, but this stuff was great. Um, so, and you know what? For those of you who saw that, it all started with me eating ketchup chips and you guys don't have ketchup chips in the US, at least some of you don't. And of all things I forgot to say in Tammy was ketchup chips, like how dumb. So I'll be sending you, Tammy, some more hickory sticks, some coffee crisp, and a bag of ketchup chips. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Sherry's creation. How long does it take for resin coasters to be hard enough to have a hot cup placed on them? 45 days is my resin. So uh, you can... Pick them up and move them around after a couple of days, but a full cure is anywhere from 30 to 45 days, depending on the resin. That's right. So a lot of people are like, oh, I put my coffee cup and it left a ring a week after you poured the resin. Well, it's not fully cured. Yeah. Like Tammy said, you can pick it up, you can touch it, you can move it. You put something hot on there, it is going to melt it and you know make it soft. So like Tammy said, depending on the resin you're using, you need at least a month for that to fully cure properly. Yep. Um, it's I see here, and Nadine says, I have the same question as DL Tyler. I'm trying to scroll up to find this question from DL Tyler. Oh, Tammy, this one's for you, girl. What's the difference between polypore and vivid enamels with color art? Go. One has varnish, one doesn't. <laughs> so you can use both products. I, I know it can seem confusing at times. You can use the vivid enamel for the bloom if you want to add your varnish into it, okay? You can also use the Vivid Enamel for brush painting. You can use it for um, acrylic pouring if you want to thin it down with water and use it that way. The Poly Pour already has varnish in it, so you can do the bloom with it without adding anything into it, or you can use it for pouring your paints. Um, they're both pretty versatile. And, you know, if you go to colorart.com, there is a frequently asked question area there. Um, there's a lot of information there. The products themselves, if you look at the descriptions, they have them there. But they can both pretty much be used 
for doing all of the same things. I'm going to be doing a live on all color art coming up sometime this week. I'm not sure. We, I have to talk to Leslie to find out what day she wants to do it. But it's going to be all about the, the color art products and helping people use them the correct way. All right. So two things here. Christy Hankinson, fluid artist. I'm a new artist, and I have to say thank you, Canela. You inspired me with the Dutch pour, and it's my favorite technique. Tammy, you are awesome and provides so much knowledge. Thank you. You're so very welcome. Um, Asher D. Rios asks, how do you ladies feel about Liquitex pouring medium? Um, I don't use it for one main reason. It's expensive. I can buy a gallon of Floetrol when it's on sale for like 14 bucks. And a little bottle of Liquitex pouring medium is 30 bucks. So that is the main reason why I do not use Liquitex pouring medium. I use Floetrol, it's cheap. It, I get the, uh, achieve what I need to achieve with my Dutch pour. So that's what works for me. I can't, I can't spend that kind. I would be broke if I bought that stuff. Yeah. I agree. It's very pricey uh, and it depends on how you use it. If you want to use it, it, it's a very good product, but it is. Um, if you want to use it as kind of like, you know, you put a, a little wad of paint in the cup and maybe a teaspoon of the pouring medium and then thin it out with the rest of the way with water, then it's not an expensive thing to use. But you have to remember paint brands have thresholds. So if you're using a deco art paint, you're going to not be able to add as much water to that deco art paint as you would a top quality uh, paint, like a golden or something like that. Paint companies, if you go to, to golden, I don't know if it's goldenpaints.com or whatever the website is, they have information on their paints and they will tell you, listen, you can use this paint with up to 50% water. Rinse Skadana, I'll bring her up. She does... Dutch pours with paint and water only. Those paints are very, very thin. She's not going to get the same results using a deco art paint using that much water as she would a good brand. And that's why she uses really good brands. Yeah, they have a great brand. Everything brand. all that water. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. There is a comment here from Colleen Forbes saying, post office doesn't insure art. What do you do if a piece you sent arrived damaged? Um, I don't know what post office you're referring to, um, but I know Tammy and I, we use USPS and Canada Post and they insure whatever. They, I insure my art pieces. Um, so in the event that I send something that arrives damaged, now I've sent hundreds and hundreds of pieces out and I've maybe gotten a handful where it looked like a rabid dog ate the package. I do not. I can, the client will send me a picture and say, I just got it and look at the package and I'm just dumbfounded. So in instances like that, I have to now contact Canada Post. I show them pictures of the damaged piece, the damaged box, the damaged package, the damaged art, and then I submit a claim. And then they have to determine whether that claim is valid or not. And then they either reimburse you just the shipping charges or reimburse you the amount of what you insured the package for. So it's really up to Canada Post who makes that determination, which is absolutely absurd, especially when you have proof that your package arrived mangled. Um, but I've been lucky and Canada Post has um, approved my claims. So when that happens, luckily none of my pieces were damaged beyond repair, maybe a little dent or something. So I give that money to the client as a discount for the damage. So that's how I've had it done on my end. Yeah, and for, for the U.S., you can definitely buy insurance. They're not going to give it to you. You have to buy it. So if you ship something priority, it comes with an automatic $50 coverage. But if your painting's worth $200, you have to tell the person at the desk, listen, I need to add extra insurance to this. Same and then it's in $50 increments. So I think I, I paid $4 for $200 worth of extra insurance. But it's on the, the shipper, you, to, to buy that. They don't just give it to you. Yeah. my For Canada Post, the... Um 
the default is a hundred bucks for here. And then if you want to add, you can add whatever amount you want. And depending on the amount you add, of like, let's say my paintings worth 500 bucks, then they will determine it'll auto calculate and determine how much more you will pay. It's only like between two and five bucks. So it's actually very worth it for a painting that's that expensive that you actually put insurance on it. All right. I have one here I want to answer uh, from Vicki Simpson Brown. Please explain the Shelly technique. Okay. So <laughs> here is what the, the bloom technique is all about. When you do a, a regular acrylic pour, you're adding Floetrol into all of your colors or pouring medium, whatever you're using. You're putting it all into, into all your colors that you're using. And then you're pouring and the effects are everywhere. She figured out if she could just use regular colors without Floetrol in all of them and then just make one special color with Floetrol, wherever she used that one special color, she would be able to control where the cells showed up. So that's why when you see a bloom and she puts that one special color in the center and blows, she's only getting cells right there. So that, that's a unique technique that, that she came up with versus adding Floetrol to all the colors and then they all just do what they want on the canvas. It's a way to control where the cells show up. And because she puts it in the middle of the puddle, it looks like a flower blooming when she blows it out. And that's, you know, where the bloom word comes from. Go ahead. Uh, okay. One or two quick ones I wanted to address. Sue Ratcliffe, which gold paint has the best shimmer? Thanks from Spain. Personally, from my, um, my experience, uh, 24 karat gold by Deco Art is by far the best gold paint I've ever used. Um, Someone asked where I get my flow trial from. Uh, Rochelle, thanks for answering that question. In Canada, where I live in Ontario, the only place you can buy flow trial is Deluxe Paint Store. I know in the US you can buy it at Home Depot and places like that. You cannot buy that at Home Depot. Deluxe Paint Store is the only place licensed to sell flow trial in, on, in Ontario where I live. Outside of, you know, British Columbia, you know, those places I don't know. Um, so yes, only at Deluxe Paint Store um, can you buy that. And uh, Gaio Place, Place, sorry, I can't pronounce that. Canela, do you put water in the bottle if using it the same day? Um, I think I understand your question. All my bottles have Floetrol paint and water in them, always. There's always water in all my paints, Floetrol. And so, yes, there's water in them. Tammy? Yep. Hold on. I'm... <clears throat> looking here I just saw one what type of editing app do I use I use um, it's called InShot I do everything on my cell phone and I have an Android and that, that's what I use um, Tammy I just saw one here I'm sorry They're, they just go by so fast I know I know uh what do i use the art fluid for the art fluid now i don't use it often so if you go to um uh, colorart.com there will be a list of things that it works for but the one thing that i do know it works for is to wet down the primary elements to be able to use them in uh resin Okay. okay G F oh gosh, that just disappeared on me. G Evering Art. Where did you get the tabletops and how do you prepare them before working on them? Um, they're actually IKEA tables. I've had them for like 10 years sitting around and I just decided, hey man, I'm gonna finally pour on these things. Now I did not prep the surface, I just poured directly on top of them. And it wasn't until after I poured on them, Tammy and I were having a chat, and I'm like, mm, maybe I should have sanded them first just so that the paint would adhere better. But you know what? They're half dry and they're drying very well. So um, I guess I didn't really need to do that because it is taking a long time to dry because it's not like a canvas where it's breathing underneath, like through the cotton. 
Um, it is a hard surface, so it is taking a lot longer to dry, but the edge has already dried really well and I'm um, having no issues. So I cannot wait till it's fully dry and put resin on those things. Let me tell you. All right, um, Alicia, Alicia wants to know another option for protecting paint on coasters instead of resin. Now, there, I had seen people say that they've had success with spray engine enamel. That and has not been my experience. Yeah. Um, varnish has not been my experience. I have not gotten anything to work other than resin on top of coasters, but that's me only me. Me too. That, that's what I can say. Um, Brenda Campbell says in Alberta, Floetrol is $26 a bottle at Deluxe. Yes, it is. Um, if you buy it regular price, it is, I think, even $32.99. However, if you have, for those of you in Canada, if you have a CAA membership, that is for, you know, mechanic, if your car breaks down on the side of the road, if you have a CAA membership, you get a significant discount when you buy your flow trial at Deluxe. And very, very often do they do BOGOs. So you would be get buy one free if you have a CAA membership. So if you don't have one and you want to buy flow trial a lot, get yourself a membership because it, the, the savings is astronomical when you have a membership. All right, Busby, I have needed to thin my metallics with water, but I've heard you're not supposed to use water. How do you thin it without using a crap ton of medium? Well, here's the thing. This is, again, my experience. I, when I use metallics, especially the Dutch pour, if I overdo it with the water, they love to fractal out or dry really grainy. So you got to be careful. Um, remember, a metallic has mica in it. So it's always going to look a little bit thicker than the rest of your colors. Um, just try to control how much water you put in it. Um, it's kind of a thing where you have to know by doing it. <laughs> um, Canela, do you use the same amount of water in your metallics? Yes, I do. Yeah. Um, I get that question a lot. Like, what if I'm using a metallic paint? What if I'm using golden and not artist loft? Do you still use the same ratios? Honestly, I do. And I'll tell you why. Because you're only adding a little thin line uh, of paint. So yeah. for me, it like even though the metallics are a lot thicker, I still use the same ratio because it doesn't seem to affect my painting or my lines when I put them down because my base is still the same consistency. So yeah. I still do use the same ratios. I really don't change them. If I changed ratios for every brand of paint I used, yeah. uh, there's no way. It would be impossible. Um, and to answer Brenda, she says, yes, I have a CA membership and I still pay 26 bucks. The problem with deluxe paint stores are, they're not a chain um, chain store. Um, they're all franchised and, and um, independently owned by independent owners. So unfortunately, each deluxe store has different rules, different, you know, promos, different everything. So that could be the reason why you're paying more. Yeah. All right. Um, just so you know, I got about 10 minutes left. Me too. Okay. My husband crept down and he's like are you almost done I'm like, oh. <laughs> so we're gonna end my, it. my, phone, my oh, phone's my. gonna die so <laughs> you're gonna lose me <laughs> yeah. so let's so see let's um, wrap it up <laughs> yeah so back to the metallic thing though i know what you're talking about you can use water and metallics just be very careful with the amount that you use um there's somebody here that is asking a question and we keep missing it about lint and, and, uh, hair and paint. Yeah, so if it. you can send it through really quick and I'll see if I can answer it for you. Um, I don't Jeannie, why do I not use a dehumidifier? I don't need one. Neither do I. Uh, um, Barb, so Tammy, there's a question here. Maybe we can both answer because I'm not 100% sure. Where did it go? Oh, gosh, I lost it. Barb Thrall asks, is it okay to sand off paint from a failed painting and can I reuse the canvas? I wouldn't sand it. 
I would just make sure it's completely and fully dry. Give it uh, quite a bit of time to dry. I don't know, a week or so. I don't know, Tammy. But you can paint over it. I would not sand that because you're probably just going to ruin the canvas. Right, Tammy? Yeah, no. no, don't. Yeah. No sanding. Do not sand it. Just repaint over it. That's it. Yeah. Uh, Gerda May. Oh, there's my question. Gerda May, I'm actually going to try a liquid glass this, this week. So it's not the same as resin, though. There, there's Resin is resin. This is a very glossy varnish but i am going to try it uh what do you do when your painting is dry and you find lint or hair in it are you asking me that or no i just read the question oh. well if you're uh, if i find a lint or hair in my painting and i i paint i mean if you resin over it you're not going to see it unless it's a big black hair or something then you're going to have a problem but uh if you could just see the the indentation from it, leave it. Then you know, just resin over it. It's gonna blend right in. Yeah. Um, I was gonna say something. I just lost my train of thought. If it's in the resin finish, then do another layer. You're gonna do another layer. There's nothing yeah. else you can do. And no, okay. I don't sand in between layers. I just pour right over. Okay. Um, Tammy says, please do this again. So, so much fun. We will do it again. And the next time we do it, it'll be on Tammy's channel the next time. So we'll keep you posted on when we're going to do another Q and A. Maybe if I could figure it out. <laughs> I'll help you figure it out. We'll, we'll do it together. Yeah. <laughs> um, Amanda M. Yes, this will be broadcast and, uh, saved. So you guys can watch it on rerun. Do not worry if you are late to the show. We have about five minutes left and we are out of here, guys. Yep. Uh, uh, Ramid wants to know where to get coasters to paint. Go right to your Home Depot or Lowe's, and you could buy them for like ten cents a tile. Uh, and the, where they sell the the bathroom tiles, get the nice ceramic co uh, tiles and paint right on those. Yeah. Let's see. There was a question I saw, and I totally lost it. Oh, I wanted to answer it too. It just disappeared on me because the comments are just flying i lost it now the comments yeah, I think it's everybody saying a good night now so i yeah. guess we'll see you for the next time to everybody who donated i i've been seeing you know emails popping up on my phone saying so and so has donated to your channel i really appreciate it guys thank you so much you guys are the best um, so yeah. stay tuned. we'll let you guys know when we'll do another q a it'll be on tammy's channel next time don't forget, we have the Switcheroo Collaboration Part 2 coming up uh, in February. So we'll keep you guys posted on that as well. Um, uh, anything else, Tammy? Well, these are just flying. So Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, think, I think that that's uh, a wrap. <laughs> I think that's a wrap. So thank you to all 500 plus of you who are watching. You guys are the best. We love you. you. I hope this was a lot of fun. This is new for us. We just tried it out. We thought we'd sit and hang out with you guys on a Saturday night since most of us are on lockdown. I know I am. Um, but thank you for joining us. And Tammy, yeah. thank you for being my guest on my yeah. channel. Love it you. My pleasure. And, Echo uh, passed out. <laughs> is that Echo behind you? Uh, that's, uh, that's Juno. Oh, is it? <laughs> yeah, Juno. He's uh, passed yeah. out. So thank you all for watching. If you caught the end of this, you can catch it on my YouTube channel and uh, just rewatch it. So thank you guys all so much for being here. Love you guys all. Thank you for your love. Love and support. you all. Have a good Have night, night, everybody. Bye-bye.